Hello everyone and welcome again to my weekly video update. My name is Naveen Agarwal and today I will talk about RT-PCR tests for COVID-19. In particular, I'm going to talk about the limit of detection because it relates directly to the rate of false negatives. Now, in light of the recent news of positive COVID-19 diagnosis of our President Trump, this has become even more relevant. So right off the bat, let me first say that I, my hopes and prayers are with the first family, and I hope that they can recover very quickly. Having said that, let's focus on the test accuracy, reliability, and what role LOD, that's limit of detection, plays in that. Now, up until now, many tests have been authorized by the FDA to come to market, but it's very, very hard to compare their performance against each other. And the reason for that is because they have been validated using different types of samples, different types of protocols, and the data is reported in different units, especially for LOD. So it becomes very difficult to compare. Good news is that FDA has now come up with a reference panel and a standard protocol that they are asking test developers to use and provide standard data to the FDA. And that some of that data has been published. So I will look into that data in this particular video and really understand how the LOD affects the rate of false negatives. So let's look right into that. So far, 267 tests have been authorized by the FDA. 212 are RT-PCR tests, 51 are antibody tests, and four are antigen tests. So there is a lot of tests available right now. Why LOD matters? Well, limit of detection is the lowest concentration of the virus that can be detected in greater than or equal to 95% of samples. For example, 19 out of 20 should be detectable if they are confirmed positive. Okay, so LOD is a measure of test sensitivity. It's analytical sensitivity compared to clinical sensitivity, which is different. This is really the sensitivity of the test itself. Below LOD, a test produces a false negative result. And LOD depends on the type of media and the sample used. And that's why it has been very difficult to compare the LOD of different tests. It is not possible to compare LOD of different tests unless a reference panel and a standard protocol is used. And that's what has happened right now. So FDA reference panel, the goal here is to share with test developers this reference panel and standardize and compare LOD values. So we will look into that in this particular video. The panel is a heat inactivated SARS-CoV-2 strain and MERS-CoV strain. And they have provided five tubes, T1 through T5, only the concentration of the virus in T1 is known, not the other tubes. So they want test developers to validate their test using this particular reference panel. So what is the current status? They have shipped this reference panel to 161 developers as of September 23rd, and they have confirmed results from 80 developers as of September 11th, and they have provided that, those results on FDA's website. So here is a summary. Uh, of swabs in transport media, and most of them are NP swabs. As you can see, majority of the tests are, tests are showing LOD about 10,000. So these are different bins. So this LOD is about uh, from, from 1,000 to 10,000, and 40 of them are in that particular bucket. Out of these 40, majority of them have LOD of about 6,000. And this LOD is being measured in terms of NAT detectable units. So NAT stands for Nucleic Acid Amplification Test. So this is a standard metric that FDA is using to report LOD data. Okay, uh, here is a, a particular paper that I came across which was very interesting. And what it shows is that approximately 10, 10 fold increase in LOD increases the rate of false negative by about 13%. So this is kind of a empirical rule of thumb that I'm going by right now. This particular data was generated by researchers at Beth Israel Health Network and Harvard Medical School. And here's a chart that they are showing in their particular paper. So if you look, in, look into that, this is, this is basically the LOD. So each interval is a 10-fold increase. 
So going from 10 to 100 to 1,000 to 10,000 and so forth. And here is the fraction of cases detected. So as you can see for this Abbott M2000 uh, platform, it's at about 100. That's their LOD. And they have a sensitivity of about 90%. So 10% of the time, they will have false negatives. And they have, they have analyzed uh, other, other uh, tests also, and they have come out with this curve. And as you can see, a tenfold decrease, which increase, which is here, causes the percent detected to fall down by about 13%. So let's look at uh, side by side comparison. And uh, there's a trade off between rapid results and sensitivity. And I'm utilizing two platforms from Abbott because that's what the data I have looked at. Abbott M2000, I talked about it, it's done in the laboratory setting. And Abbott ID now is a rapid point of care 15 minute test. So in the EUA, they show an LOD of 100 copies per mil for the Abbott M2000 and 125 genome equivalent per milliliter for Abbott ID now. So I don't know how to compare that. But FDA panel testing shows 5,400, 5,400 NDU per mil for the Abbott M2000 and 300,000 NDU per mil for Abbott ID now. So that is almost a 60 fold increase in the LOD. And as, as we can imagine, the sensitivity will come down. So here's an estimated negative rate. 10% for the Abbott M2000 based on a study conducted with 28,000, nearly 28,000 samples on nearly 20,000 patients that had 22% positivity rate. And for Abbott ID now, the sensitivity is approximately 25% relative to M2000 based on about 500 samples tested. So as we can see, LOD is a good indicator of false negative rate. And if we know the LOD in a standard way, we can compare different tests for their predicted performance. Question is, we have so many tests, as I showed the FDA data, which have LODs even above 500,000 NDU per mil. The best is 180 NDU per mil. There's a test. And the worst is over 600,000. So there's a big range and most of the tests are around 10,000 or so. The question is for the FDA, now that we know this information, what are we going to do about this? You know, the risk benefit needs to be continually evo evaluated so we know what is going on. And the question is, why don't we revoke the EUA of these tests which have very high LODs? They're going to produce a lot of false negative results. I believe that discussion is happening right now, and I do not know what will happen in future, but it's a very relevant question to ask. So I hope this provides some uh, clarity to what is going on. And if you or loved one has to take a test, ask these questions. Talk about which particular test was used and understand their LOD to understand what are, is the potential false negative result. And then maybe you can make a more informed decision about what needs to happen next. Maybe a second test needs to be performed. Maybe you just self-quarantine just uh, out of abundance of caution, even if it's negative. So all those questions can be answered appropriately if we have this information. So I hope this is useful. Uh, let me know any questions, comments on your mind. Write to me or follow me on LinkedIn. And I look forward to hearing from you. I hope all of you are staying safe. And thank you very much again for your continued interest and attention. Music